Hello. Hello. <laughs> Come on then. I thought you were talking. Every time we try All and right. do this, this is what happens. Okay. We're at the water point, uh, just having a cup of coffee whilst we're waiting for the tank to fill. And um, then we're going to go do our L sands, aren't we? So we thought we've got a few minutes, we'll do a quick introduction. Last vlog, we just recovered from COVID and we'd gone back to the work, haven't we? And uh, we had to yeah. decide what we were going to do because our original plan was to go down to Oxford um, and we we're actually going to meet my brother. Um, they, there's a gin distillery in, in Oxford and we were doing a tour with them. Yeah, we? so it was awfully tempting, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we were on a bit of a timeline because we got delayed with COVID and we had to build a crick for the um, boat show. So uh, with quite a few miles to do, uh, we decided we would turn around and head back up to crick through Braunston. So, yeah, yeah, we decided uh, that we didn't, we wanted to have enough time to do Oxford Justice and mm. it would have just been a quick in and out and we just thought we'll add Oxford onto another trip when we actually go and do the Thames, won't we? Perhaps next year? Who yeah, knows? yeah. And, yeah. And the great thing is, so and you might see as well, on the way back up the Oxford, uh, we see quite a few different things. So although we're doing the same route, it looks different from the other direction. Yeah, yeah. You see some quite yeah. different things. You notice then, different things yeah. and um, you more at different places. And you sometimes you get to stop at the same places because you love them so much, like yeah. Lower Hayford. We love yeah, Lower yeah, Hayford, definitely. didn't we? So, so um, um, yeah, so. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. My water's full. Back now, sorry about that. Um, so, we decided we were going to turn around go back up the Oxford uh, the problem was at um, Thrup there was nowhere to turn with so we made the decision to try and reverse back up um, past the mooring through the lift bridge didn't we which yes. was quite entertaining yeah. because it was um, very windy and trying to steer a, a boat in reverse that doesn't have any steering was uh, Bit, bit of a job. Yeah, you, you can't steer in reverse, can you? No, no, literally it's just a floating sail that's, yeah. uh, you know, the side of the boat's catching the wind and it's just uh, going where it wants to go. So, anyway, it took us a while, but yeah. we, so, we so did, I, a, did a reasonable job. I was quite happy yeah, with so it. Yeah, so I videoed all of that and, and as I was editing it, I was thinking, oh, let me just speed this up because it's taking forever. But then I thought, no, let me just leave it as it is so that everyone can appreciate how, how hard it is to do that, isn't it? Yeah. trying to like portray real life on a boat as opposed to it's all yeah, rosy yeah, and yeah, easy because yeah, yeah, it's not rosy and yeah. easy sometimes no, is it <laughs> so okay. enjoy this week's vlog and as always we absolutely love reading all your comments and if you enjoy yeah. the video give us a like yeah please do and subscribe and um, tap the bell button and then it will notify you when we do our next vlog and um, hopefully you'll notice we're doing them a bit, bit more regularly now yeah so. I've really been Sort of busting a gut to catch up, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, enjoy and um, we'll catch you again soon. Cheers. Bye bye. bye. So, as Pete maneuvered the boat slowly backwards, I went up to the lift bridge to wait. I didn't want to open the bridge until he was much closer as there was quite a steady flow of traffic using it.
Once he was through the bridge, then he had to manoeuvre to get onto the water point. And you can see it was all a bit tight. We started filling with water and you can check on the water gauge to see how it's doing. And while Pete emptied the toilet cassette, I sorted out the rubbish on the boat and took it to the bins. And while we're still on the water point, I got the maximum benefit by filling up the washing up bowl and filling up the kettle as well. With a full water tank, empty toilet cassettes and all the rubbish gone, we were on our way.
We came back through Shipton Weir Lock, which is an unusual lozenge shaped lock where the canal meets the river. I closed the lock gates and then went to catch up with Pete who pulled in to let me back on. And had a short stretch of the River Cherwell to cruise on. Due to the change in levels of the river, there's a warning system in place. But everything was green for us that day. and we saw this unique floating patio again on our way back up. We quite often get asked by non-boaters how we navigate our way around the canals and we use these Nicholson's guides which are ordnance survey maps specially devised for the canal system to find our way. There are different guides for different areas of the country. The maps show the bridge numbers, the locks, shops, 
pubs and other points of interest along the way. So we always know where we are by looking at the bridge numbers and we'll take you on a short stretch to show you what we mean. Pete's pulling into the lock landing here to let me off to go up to set the lock for him. You can see the bridge number there in the stonework. And then right after the bridge, there's the lock. And there they both are on the map. The lock's shown as a V on the map, pointing in the direction that the lock's going. This one is going uphill. I close the lock gate behind us and then Pete pulls in to let me back on and we're on our way again.
We decided to stop for the night just before Dashwood Lock and Dashwood Bridge, Bridge 209. A big thank you to Susan Chanuka, I hope I've said that right Susan, for supporting our channel on Buy Me A Coffee this week. Thanks for watching and if you've liked this video please give us a thumbs up and join us next time as we keep heading north towards our most favourite mooring spot.